The national plan for data capture at the Swedish Transport Administration is the basis for all our work in the field of surveying. The objective is to provide project engineers and project managers with basic data for design and the information needed for conducting infrastructure projects with high quality as cost-effectively as possible. With our specialist expertise in surveying, we therefore want to help find good and effective methods for capturing and processing geographical data. When we later deliver the information, we want to make it as attractive and useful as possible. Data capture of basic data for design can be carried out either with airborne LiDAR scanning or the mobile mapping technique. Airborne LiDAR scanning is the obvious choice for new road construction and data capture for large areas of land. When preparing basic data for design along existing roads and in their immediate surroundings, the mobile mapping technique is best. The division between the two methods is presently about 20% for airborne LiDAR scanning and 80% for the mobile mapping technique. Because the mobile mapping technique is cost-effective and also provides more information with respect to various phenomena and objects along the corridor, this method should always be chosen for engineering on existing sections of road. When planning mobile mapping, the project manager marks the road alignment on map materials. To avoid unnecessary supplemental surveying later, it is important to ensure that all connecting roads, including local roads, are included in planning. LiDAR scanning a little more than what is needed in a project often has minimal impact on the cost and time spent in comparison with supplemental surveying at a later stage with traditional surveying methods. Most mobile mapping systems have a range of about 100 meters, but the corridor width of the captured LiDAR data naturally depends on angles of incidence, slope heights, terrain formations, vegetation, noise barriers and other obstructing objects. This entails in practice that a corridor of about 40 meters is attained with LiDAR data that maintains sufficient density and quality for preparing basic data for design. Vehicles for the mobile mapping technique are above all equipped with a precision positioning system consisting of a GNSS satellite receiver, inertial measurement unit and odometer. Besides this positioning system, Additional sensors are chosen, such as laser scanners and equipment for still photography, video and ground-penetrating radar, based on what is needed. It is therefore important to be able to correctly specify each project's needs for data. GNSS is an umbrella term that refers to the reception of satellite data from both the American satellite system GPS and the Russian system GLONASS. This combination provides more accurate positioning. The GNSS receiver is connected to the positioning system and produces continual position and time data, which is used to position and link together data from all the sensors. An inertial measurement unit consists of gyro sensors, accelerometers and other sensors that register changes in geographical position and orientation. The inertial measurement unit registers position and orientation data with a very high pulse repetition frequency. The GNSS satellite receiver and odometer, alternatively the speedometer, are often connected to the inertial measurement unit and together constitute a positioning system. The odometer continually measures the distance the vehicle covers. This sensor is primarily used by the inertial measurement unit to compute and improve position data. A laser scanner adapted for the mobile mapping technique has a high pulse repetition frequency and sweeps a full circle, 360 degrees. Each second, up to 300,000 points are registered and the measurements even include echo information and intensity, or what is referred to as reflectance. 
echo information entails that several returns of the same pulse can be attained if a portion of the pulse continues and strikes something else further away. The intensity and reflectance give the points a grayscale value for the reflections of the encountered materials. In this way, painted white lines and dark asphalt surfaces clearly appear in the LiDAR data. Video is recorded at high resolution simultaneously as LiDAR scanning. The starting and stopping times are registered so that the video recording can later be synchronized with other sensor data. Photos are taken with two or more cameras. These cameras are highly sensitive to light, which enable short shutter times and consequently little blurring. The cameras are oriented to cover the roadway and as far to the sides as possible. Each picture is saved with a timestamp so that exact positioning can be calculated during post-processing. Ground penetrating radar is used in many contexts to obtain information about ground conditions and soil structures. Data from ground-penetrating radar provides valuable information about surfacing, layer thicknesses, the occurrence of boulders, culverts, cables and other objects, but also information about the materials under the road construction. This enables appropriate maintenance measures to be chosen, which in turn provides good economy in the projects. When LiDAR scanning, the system is raised above the roadway to attain better penetration in the undergrowth and to reach ditch bottoms and other low points in the terrain. LiDAR scanning is conducted in a continual motion. Due to this, it is fully possible to even scan heavily trafficked roads without closures and other protective measures that would entail inconveniences for motorists. LiDAR scanning is not dependent on daylight. But because photos and video are normally captured at the same time, daylight and good visibility are necessary. Scanning when there is precipitation produces poor results. The LiDAR data's density is dependent on speed during capture, distance between the scanner and object, the scanner's frequency, a normal point density for the mobile mapping technique is about 1,500 to 2,000 points per square meter in central parts of the roadway. The scanners used in these contexts can measure relative dimensions and distances with good accuracy of about 5 to 10 millimeters. This means, for example, that one can measure curb heights, clearances for bridge constructions, sign heights, and the shapes and sizes of other objects. Crossfalls and rut depths on the roadway are also visible. By complementing the LiDAR data with traditional surveying, the quality and absolute accuracy can be increased. An example of when this is appropriate is with ditch bottoms, which are often overgrown with dense undergrowth and consequently difficult to reach with laser scanners. At the same time as scanning is underway, the project is photographed and recorded on video in both directions. All signs and objects along the corridor can thus be evaluated from both directions. Position-determined photos and video recordings are presented after capture in a viewer with a geographical relationship to a map window. Besides video and photos, an animated drive can also be shown in the viewer using the LiDAR data. This gives the person watching a clear picture of the data capture's scope and detail. In this way, project managers and other concerned parties can view the LiDAR data without needing to deal with large data volumes and special software. The LiDAR data can also be draped in color from the photos. This provides yet another property that helps us to interpret what we see. 
To be able to geographically process captured LiDAR data, field measurements are necessary. The field measurements normally consist of latitude, longitude and elevation support and lines of ground control points. To attain good final results, it is important to begin with known latitude, longitude and elevation points. If some or all known points in the vicinity of the project are lacking, points of origin are established through careful satellite measurement to attain results that are as good as possible. Latitude, longitude and elevation support is constituted by coordinates for a number of road alignment markings or other clearly visible objects along the corridor. These are later used to fine-tune the LiDAR data's geographical positions for latitude, longitude and elevation. A line of ground control points consists of a series of breakpoints that are at least 20 meters long and that crosses the road so that the entire road section is accurately described. A line of ground control points is only used to verify the accuracy of the LiDAR data and the subsequently produced ground model. Elevation deviations between lines of ground control points and LiDAR data usually produce a clear indication of the quality we can expect from the ground model. Latitude, longitude and elevation support is measured every other kilometre along the road and lines of ground control points are placed between these points. In certain cases, more frequent field measurements are necessary to obtain the precision the project requires. The results from the field measurements are adjusted and matched against the LiDAR data. Through further processing, a design map is attained that includes all of the map objects needed for project engineering. A ground model can also be produced with brake lines that show the road structure and terrain formations. The ground model is confined to an area limit that is based on a fixed corridor width of 40 meters which at certain locations is narrower where terrain formations and obstructing objects prohibit LiDAR scanning. From the ground model, contour lines are also produced and these are placed on the design map. The finished product from the mobile mapping technique can be fully adapted to the current project phase. When the project subsequently enters the next phase, the data can be refined and adapted so that everyone's needs are fulfilled. The goal of the Swedish Transport Administration is for all captured information to be centrally stored and thus easily accessible during projects. This gives us opportunities to reuse historical data when working on new projects or supplements to previously conducted projects.